What's going on, all of my friends? Brezzy43 here coming at you. Um, I am ready to talk Players' Cup 4. So um, I've, had a, I've had a nice break from recording. Um, I did took some time um, for myself, spent some time uh, with my girlfriend, and also just like kind of enjoyed life. The, war the weather's getting warmer here for us, um, which is great. But I did not stop playing Pokemon. I did continue to play and did keep my eye on a lot of the metagame. And right now, um, I'm pretty excited for Players Cup 4. Um, I, as you all probably know from me talking previously, I uh, played in Players Cup 2 and I managed to actually get a qualification um, for the record, but I missed it because of a small technicality with my registration. Um, I didn't link the right account or something. I don't know. I guess I did it wrong. But then Players Cup 3 happened. I couldn't decide on the team. I wasn't playing very much, so unfortunately I missed it. But I am very excited to be getting after Players Cup 4, and hopefully I can qualify and get into um, get into it and get into the competition. So first off, I wanted to chat a little bit about Players Cup 3, um, and then I also wanted to chat about what I've been using to prepare for Players Cup 4, share some cool team ideas with you, things that I would recommend using in the current metagame as it stands. So first, let's go ahead and jump into um, Players Cup 3. So here is the teams from Players Cup 3. Um, we had our we are down to our global finals we've got um, some pretty unique teams overall it looks like there are one two three four colossal um, almost one from each region there are two from north america um, one in latam and one in europe uh, there's an uh, joe's restricted as eveltal which is pretty cool it's a unique one jonathan evans also got um Kyogre as a as his restricted and we did see a Solgaleo otherwise the rest of the metagame is dominated by Zacian, Groudon and Calyrexes. Um, in this case Zacian was the most used restricted Pokemon bringing in four copies into the top 16 um, one two three and four and we had Groudon occupying four as well uh, so I guess it's a tie excuse me for misspeaking there one two three and four and then we had three Calyrex Shadow two Calyrex Ice, one Kyogre, one Eveltal, and one Solgaleo. Um, so some things that I'm noticing here, some things I've been keeping in mind is that you need to have a game plan for Sun. Um, Sun is everywhere right now. Uh, it's literally just a phenomenal archetype. It never it never got worse, and it, it's always been good. Um, I think that making sure that when you're if you are doing some team building making sure that you have an answer to it in mind it looks like actually even jonathan evans who was piloting a kyogre team still had a sun component to it as well um some other interesting things to note here about this we have obviously a lot of incineroar um there were four thunderous one two three thunderous um lots of incineroar um Lots of Amoongus. Well, actually, not a lot of Amoongus. Just two, three, three Amoongus. Okay, um, a couple of a couple of Rillaboom, which is pretty cool to see. Lots of Venusaur. One, two, three, four, five, six, six Venusaur. Um, so a lot of people are preparing for Sun. Um, if you look at Basically, every, everyone's got a game plan for it if they're not piloting it themselves, and even some of these teams that are piloting it themselves have a game plan for it as well. So Sun should be public enemy number one. On top of that, I would highly encourage that um, you, when you, if you're going to team build, you consider for one of the few times I can safely say this, that Intimidate, although it's a fantastic ability against a lot of Pokemon, you really have to be careful with all these Thunderous running around. I think it's safe to say that either having an answer for your Pokemon, answer on your team for the Thunderous to just knock it out as quickly as possible, or to just not have Intimidated at all, is something that I would highly recommend at this current moment. Um, so yeah, these are the these are the teams here. These players will all be competing in the global finals. We should see that in a couple of weeks, I believe. But 
um, I want to jump over to kind of what I've been up to in these coming weeks here. So I've actually still been playing. I managed to peek on the top thousand. Um, I uh, in this last the rank is actually resetting right now as we speak. They're going through their updates to get ready for the next month worth of laddering. But I peaked at top. 700 and then i did go through a steady decline after that in the past couple of days so i took the last two days off um three days off actually and i didn't play any games um on console i did i did do some experimenting on showdown and stuff but i uh ultimately just stopped playing on console i wanted to take a break i was doing some lapras zation stuff and the metagame is pretty volatile towards the traditional lapras teams i think you need to have an updated lapras team to to kind of be with the times so uh, let's go ahead and jump over to the teams here so first and foremost I want to talk about the Lapras team that I was using originally um, I had the Lapras Amoongus and Cinerization component to the team which is pretty standard um, Thunderous which was pretty bulky spread overall Assault Vest whoops can I undo that there we go and then Hydreigon with Lumberry um, to help me fight the sleep components. And um, I, I'm running Draco Meteor on this thing, but this is this was the spread that I opted for. Mostly bulky, but um, ultimately it's uh, it's pretty like pretty standard Laprisation team with a Thunderous component to to go with the Lapras, and then Hydreigon to help out against Sun as well as. excuse me, as well as the um, Calyrex Shadow Rider matchup. And the, the reality of this team is that I think it's a very good team. Um, I think you, but I do think you have to play well. Um, there's a lot of people that are running these like very fast offensive duos like Zacian plus a fast air streamer, whether it's Dragapult, Thunderous, things like things of this nature. Um, and on their Lapras teams or just in general. And it's it can be really difficult to keep up. Um, so having either a, a good Trick Room component to the team or running something like that to... Or, or your own Airstream mode as well would benefit the team immensely. So a couple of things I changed here. Um, I did some redistributing of my EVs on my Lapras. Um, I'm going to be changing my Amoongus to be physical instead of special. The metagame has kind of moved past a little bit. I think our matchup against Kyogre, I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit in favor of um, a better uh, overall Amoongus. So I'm just going to flip-flop these around and go with a, with a bold nature instead. I'm not going to be running minimum speed anymore. I'm going to have some uh, IV. It's not going to be perfect, but it's not going to be zero, and it's not going to be a, a speed-reducing nature. Incineroar, um, safety goggles is still pretty solid. I like the fact that my Incineroar still outspeeds my Lapras, and this spread makes sense to me, so I would recommend this. Zacian, the reality is that getting outsped by other Zacian is a really unfortunate um is really unfortunate when it happens. I am a really big proponent of this spread specifically because it's phenomenal for the Lapras team. But when you're playing against opposing, when you're playing against opposing Zacian and you know that you're going to get outsped, it can feel awful. And sometimes it'll lose you the game. So this spread is good when you're not facing other Zacian. It's something I would highly recommend for that. But I think you need to be jolly max speed. Um, you don't necessarily have to run. You could still do something like. You could still do something like this. Um, I don't know what people are doing. You 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 definitely want to be jolly though. So if you find some magic number here that you like, that's what I would recommend. But definitely jolly max speed is where you want to start. Thunderous is pretty standard. I'm running a bit more bulk on my Thunderous than opposing players are because. It's a pretty important. Uh, it's a pretty important component to my Calyrex Shadow Rider matchup because I want it to be able to survive things with the Salt Vest 
and just be like there for the airstream support for Zacian. And then Hydreigon, primarily there as a sun check, also decent against Calyrex and also decent against some of the other teams as well. Rain, it's not bad against um, things like that. It's a bulky Pokemon in general. So I would recommend if you, if you want to play longer games and you want to grind through games and predict your opponent and everything, this is the team I would recommend you play. Um, you do have to play well and you do have to read what your opponent's doing you can't you don't get very many free wins with this team and the sun matchup is still a little bit tricky even though you do have lumberry hydreigon um it should almost just be safety goggles hydreigon i think it i think it it might we might have to revisit the item on nc but um this is this is a a, a combination of pokemon that i would recommend and it's been good for me thus far but i've got some other teams in mind um, some other things that I'm going to be showing you. My recommendation moving forward would be to explore. I've got a couple of different teams queued up here. So first, let's go ahead and jump over to the Lapras team that I'm considering using for Players Cup 4. So I've managed to find a way to fit Colossal into this team comp and still have a reasonable matchup against a lot of the field. Um, these G-Max effects are so very, very good. And Colossal can help against Sun. It can help against those fast Airstream matchups. And it can also do wonders against some of this team's bad matchups. Um, Lapras has some phenomenal matchups, but it also has some pretty rough matchups. Sun particularly is difficult for Lapras, the Lapras mode, because Lapras really wants to be setting up Aurora Veil and using that to like mitigate damage. But the reality is, is that... Uh, Opposing Colossal, opposing Venus, or opposing Charizard, these G-Max um, effects, these G-Max Vine Lash and Wildfire and Vocalith effects that deal residual chip damage at the end of the turn doesn't get doesn't get reduced by screens. So they're also a, a percentage of your HP. They're one sixth of both of your Pokemon. So like one sixth of Lapras's uh, two hundred and nine HP is is quite a lot. It's almost it's almost 30 HP a turn. Um, I did the math right there. Yeah, I think it's like 20. It's upper 20s, somewhere in that range. That's a lot of HP to lose. Um, did I do that right? Yes, I did. No, it's more than 30. Excuse me. It's um, here. I'll just pull up the calculator quick. I'm not confident in my math at the moment. It's, it's kind of late here. Yeah, so it's 34. So Lapras loses 34 HP every turn to the Vocalith chip. That's a ton. That's a ton of HP. Um, Amoongus loses a lot as well. Incineroar, a lot as well. Like, these Pokemon that, uh, that like, the, the Sun matchup can be, the, the, the chip from the opposing teams can be a little bit tricky. Now, Lapras does match up pretty well against Colossal, but Sun, having another component to your team to help against Sun is really nice. Um, that being said, I want to jump into these spreads really fast. Um, I redistributed my bulk again here. I'm, I'm not really calculating for anything specific. I've got 28 um, EVs into HP to optimize for our Life Orb recoil. I'm still running max special attack with Life Orb. I invested more into defense than I did special defense because, um, I, if you recall, I was actually like this. Um, but I'd rather have the, uh, because of that, I wanted to still put a little bit into my, I wanted to put a little bit into my special defense to make up for the fact that I'm cutting from HP. And I actually upped my speed to 100. This should pretty firmly say that I'm not, I don't want to get outsped by any other base 60s um, and even some base 70s that aren't investing in any speed. Um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be outspeeding. So this is the Lapras that I would recommend. I've been I've been enjoying it so far. Um, the Amoongus, I just switched the defense and special defense. I don't know exactly what my EV is. I think it's like there. I think it's 43 stat. But um, it's not 31 and it's not 0. Um, you forfeit a little bit of this against opposing base 30s, but they're just not really around that much. And you still underspeed what you need to underspeed in Trick Room to put things to sleep. So pretty standard. I still like Paul and Puff a lot on this Pokemon, but I would recommend Sludge Bomb as the second choice, maybe Energy Ball or something like that. Um, this is the 
<clears throat> excuse me, this is the really big change that I made. This is the change I'm making to Incineroar. I'm, because I'm not running Thunderous anymore, I actually freed up my Assault Vest. Um, so I'm going to be running Flare Blitz, Fake Out, U-Turn, and Lash Out for my Dark move. You could run Darkest Lariat here if you wanted to, but I have been impressed with Lash Out so far just because of Opposing Intimidates, just getting a, just picking up a little bit of extra damage. Um, this The bulk is nothing, or the EVs are nothing really specific. I EV'd for the Nature Jump here at 76. 108 speed outspeeds my Lapras by one. If you've been watching any of my gameplay recently, recently you know that... Um, it's important to have your Incineroar outspeed your Lapras when you're Dynamaxing Lapras for a variety of reasons. It's come up for us where we wanted to bust a Mimic use Disguise first and then kill it with Lapras. We want to get a powerful Flare Blitz off before we set up the rain. Things like this. So just, and it drives me nuts when, if I have Pokemon speed tying or like anti-synergy where I something outspeeds that often it's come up where I'd rather have Incineroar outspeed Lapras just, just because. Um, my new Zation spread... This is Jolly Max Speed with a good amount of attack. Um, this bulk, I believe, allows you to take a foul play from Porygon without having it break your sub, which is a pretty nice calc to have. Okay, so I still have my Lapras Incineroar Moongization combo or, or com component, but now here I've got Colossal. So this is a this is my this is my Colossal from Series Seven. This is Wolf Glick's spread. Um, 180 speed allows you to outspeed Timid Venu in the sun by one point. Um, your max special attack because you need it. You got your weakness policy. And then the rest is put into bulk. Pretty straightforward. Um, protect. I'm not running Heat Crash. I don't know why it chose Heat Crash. I'm sorry. I'm running Heat Wave. Meteor Beam. And I'm actually opting for Earth Power. I don't really need the grass coverage. Um, I've still got a pretty good time against opposing water types and opposing ground types. Um... Because I've got I've got Lapras, so um, I think having coal have it Earth Power instead will be will be better. Um, I also noticed last time I was running Solar Beam, I was encountering a little bit of anti synergy with um, setting up grassy terrain and having my opponent heal when I'm trying to deal them residual damage with G Max Vocalith. So that was one thing. Um, and then the real spiciness of the team here is a Safety Goggles Dragonite. This thing's actually been pretty sweet for me. Um, let me make sure all my natures are there. Modest, jolly, careful, bold, modest, adamant. Okay. So this Pokemon's dope. Um, I have really been liking this team, uh, with this Dragonite with this team. The reason why Dragonite is the choice over Dragapult is that you, you want to have Aqua Jet. And you want it to be on a Pokemon that can't be faked out. Um, there's a lot of Tailwind running around right now, and um, Tailwind coming off of a Whimsicott can allow your opponent to outspeed your Dragapult pretty easily. Um, so Aqua Jet is pretty important, and on top of that, Urshifu can actually be faked out. So if you run Dragonite, you know that you're not going to get faked out by your opponent because of Inner Focus, and you know you have Aqua Jet. So you've got a, the probably the, the most reliable way currently to set up your Colossal specifically setting up your colossal the um the moves on this pokemon are pretty straightforward i opted for dual wing beat um as my offensive move extreme speed and aqua jet extreme speed and aqua jet like this pokemon being able to because this pokemon's speed stat is only base 80 being able to use two priority moves is pretty nice and then dual wing beat allows you to like pressure amoongus and different things like that and then I'm choosing to run Thunder Wave. It's been really good for me so far, but if you wanted to run something else here, I would recommend Breaking Swipe. But Thunder Wave is pretty has been pretty sweet for me. It's come up a couple of different times where I can like Thunder Wave something to like slow it down or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's that's the that's the move set. the The spread is pretty straightforward. I knew I wanted to be running max HP. I'm running Adamant, and originally I had EV'd for this Nature Jump right here. Um, and then I did some more calcs, and I found out that this extra point actually helps us a bit more against Amoongus with Dual Wing Beat. Um, certain Amoongus spreads will die to Dual Wing Beat from Dragonite, um, which is really nice. This 28 defense allows us to survive a plus one Behemoth Blade from Azation um, from full HP. 
um, four special defense just for that value point, and then 12 speed. I'm opting for 12 speed, just I don't really have any specific reason why. Um, technically, you can you can survive the Behemoth Blade with one fewer point. So if you wanted to be like a little more specific here, you could potentially give yourself 24 more EVs to put wherever you want. Um, but I I did some testing with this and I was a big fan of, of just having this like this. So um, this is gonna be the spread that I'm gonna run. So here's, here's the team for, I'm strongly considering this team. Colossal Dragonite gives you a lot of good game plan against what your opponent's going to be doing um i uh i really like how colossal lappers kind of offset each other in the matchups where colossal's really good against the fast matchups um you can still dynamax this thing and get the get the vocalith up and just let it die afterwards it's fine it did its job it got its vocalith up it's still doing the residual damage you don't need to keep attacking with this thing necessarily um you 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 still get dragonite which is a actually a decent pokemon against sun and rain because of its typing um the only thing on these sun teams that hits it super effectively is rock slide from groudon if they don't have a groudon then it resists all the attacks except for a sludge bomb and, and a max airstream from the charizard and the venusaur so typing wise dragonite's pretty solid its bulk is pretty good um, this extra attack allows you to Dynamax it in a pinch if you need to for some reason. Dual Wing Beat does turn into a 130 base power max move. So you can you can still dish some decent damage. And you've got max strike off of base 80. So it's not nothing. Um, I think that Dragonite might be maxed for me a little bit more often than I'm expecting initially. Um, Incineroar with this spread is really good against the opposing Calyrex Shadow, which is another particularly tough matchup for this team. But Lapras mode is good against opposing Lapras. It's good against Kyogre. It's good against um, opposing screens, teams, things like that. So, um, yeah, I'm strongly considering this team. So this is, again, Life Orb Lapras, Sash Amoongus, AV Incin, Zacian, Weakness Policy Colossal, and Safety Goggles Dragonite. Safety Goggles is also important, so you can just completely ignore Amoongus. You don't have to worry about your Aqua Jets getting redirected. So... That's my recommendation for updated Lapras. Colossal gives you some nice free wins against some stuff too, which is going to be really nice for a best of one qualifier. So definitely. And like Colossal has to be respected, right? If my opponent doesn't have an answer to Colossal, I'm bringing Colossal. It's just like the reality of the situation. So um, super, super cool. Really excited to use this team if that's this is what I end up choosing. I went ahead and put together three other teams for you guys really quick. Some of them are pretty straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and do this one first. Um, this is actually not my team. It's not my creation. It was created by Pato. Um, Pato VGC is a phenomenal, phenomenal player. I believe he's Italian. Don't quote me on that for sure. But he's a very, very good player. I watched him play this team on stream, and it looked really, really good. Um, this team basically just supplanted Metagross with Silgaleo, which is basically just better metagross if that's even a thing um you've got the same special defense as metagross you've got slightly worse defense but you've got the same attack way better hp and better speed um and you can still do the bulldoze thing with full metal body functioning the same way as clear body so so Galeo, pretty straightforward i recommend these evs a lot this is what pato was doing and it just makes sense to me um, you want to you want to maximize your spadef. You don't if you're running policy. You don't need to be running max attack. It's just kind of unnecessary, um, especially when you're we, you have multiple ways to activate your weakness policy. So um, I would recommend skipping that um, and going for a hundred attack. This just EVs for your second jump, so you get a nice boost um, for that. Spectrier, Focus Ash, this is your Bulldoze user that also gets to Shadow Ball and Snarl things. Pato's running Timid Max Speed. I don't think you have to do that. I think you can lower it down just a little bit to outspeed, like opposing base, you know, 120s or whatever. But if, you, if you're worried about opposing Spectrier or whatever, you can keep it at base at Timid Max. Um, I don't know what these EVs do. These EVs are just what Pato was running. So um, Shadow Ball, Snarl, Will-O-Wisp, Bulldoze is very good. This Grim Snarl set is sweet. It's super, super, super good. Um, pretty straightforward EV spread, but like clay with double screens, Thunder Wave, and Sucker Punch. So 
you can sucker punch your own cell galeo for weakness policy activation but sucker punch does ko calyrex so if your opponent is expecting you to like if they see you lead Grimstone, they don't lead in DD, and they're just expecting you to do like some annoying stuff or whatever, or just like sit there and set screens or whatever. It's just sucker punch them, boom, dead, game over. Um, not not game over, but like you take out the restricted, you one shot it. It's it, they're dead. Grimstone has 120 base attack, stab boosted four times weak. It's gonna die. Rotom Heat is Pato's um, sun check. Um, Safety Goggles Rotom does phenomenally against everything, again, except for Rock Slide from Groudon. Um, but you can still pressure it really hard with a good amount of attack here. Um, not, not a lot of speed. You don't need a ton. If you were finding that you wanted to go more speed, I'd recommend pumping this down to 116 and then going like this. But I really like... I really like this. Um... This Porygon 2 set, I don't know if Pato is the creator of this, but this set's really cool. I've been seeing it around in Master Ball tier a lot. Um, trace allows you to trace a whole bunch of different really cool abilities like Prankster, Intimidate. Um, I saw somebody trace Steam Engine, which was kind of cool, but you can you can copy a whole bunch of different good abilities. And you're running Recover, Eerie Impulse, Foul Play, and Trick Room. So you're you're using foul play because it's phenomenal right now against all these big physical special or physical attackers that are boosting their stats um eerie impulse is really good against a lot of different teams um especially if you trace pranks off of a grim snarl that your opponent has you can eerie impulse their their partner and then a pretty standard tapu finny for terrain support for sogaleo um good for stalling dynamaxes very bulky pokemon um yeah, so this is Pato's team. I would recommend using this team as well. Pretty solid. I watched him play it really well. You can check it out on his Twitch VODs if you want. It's Pado, P-A-D-O. Um, he played it recently, and it was a really cool team. Um, next team would be um, my a team I've been kind of keeping my eye on recently, something I've been kind of exploring. Very similar to what Pato was talking, or Pato was doing, um, except I've got a Necrozma team. So Necrozma is very similar to Solgaleo, except that you basically convert your stats a little bit differently. So Solgaleo has 40 more HP stats and 20 fewer in both defenses. And then it has 20 fewer attack in favor of 20 speed. So this thing's stats are absurd. Just absolutely absurd. This Pokemon is very, very, very similar to... Um, Calyrex Ice, actually. Um, if we take a look at Calyrex Ice here, um, I don't want to lose the team here. So Ice Rider has 100 HP, 97. Calyrex Ice has 165 attack, 157. 150 defense, that's the big difference here, is that you've got 100, you've only got about 130 here in this stat. But in 130 speed F, you've got about 110. So Calyrex has slightly better stats in these three categories. Not much here, only five more points, but these two categories specifically. But Necrozma makes up for that in a little bit of a different way. Um, Steel Psychic is a really good type. Um, it's better than Ice Psychic in terms of both offense and defense. But on top of that, Prism Armor is pretty insane. Prism Armor is solid rock, similar to Rhyperior. Um, you only take you take less damage from super effective hits and two of your max moves are boosting your defenses so you are just like you become this insanely bulky machine especially behind screens you are so hard to ko um, this spread is pretty straightforward um, i hit this i hit the uh the nature jump here um hp maxed out um one point in defense a lot of points in spadaf brings it even and then one value point in speed i didn't think i wanted to run min speed you don't really need to you don't really pick up any extra matchups really at least in my experience um maybe you under speed lapras in in against like opposing lapras teams but ultimately that doesn't really matter it hasn't mattered to me so far at least um especially since the rest of this team is not super reliant on the trick room that that you'd be setting so Grimmsnarl, this is exactly the same set as Pato's. I've been seeing this set around a lot. Sucker Punch activates my policy. Thunder Wave to control speed for Necrozma as well. And then Reflect and Light Screen serve that purpose as well. 
Volcarona. Volcarona is a super cool Pokemon in my opinion, and it's a bit underexplored right now. Um, the main reason why I like this Pokemon is that it actually matches up incredibly well against Zacian. You resist all of Zacian's moves that it carries with the exception of Wild Charge if it has it. You match up pretty well against some of the Steel types. Fire Bug is a pretty good type defensively outside of Rock Slide from Lando and Groudon. And then occasionally some of these Steel types like Metagross will carry it. So outside of those Rock type attacks, Volcarona is a fantastic Pokemon. It's got a neutrality to ground, um, resistance to fairy. We can look at the resistances quick too. I've used this thing before and I was very pleasantly surprised at, at, at how good it actually is. Um, quad resist to grass, fighting, ice, steel, fairy, bug. You pick up a ton of good resistances. Calyrex Ice Rider can't one-shot you, especially with all this extra bulk. Um, so it's just, it's a really solid Pokemon defensively right now. Um, 60 special attack overheat allows you to one-shot, um, one-shot most Zacian. Um, I will show you. Volcarona, 50, 60 Spatak, and Overheat, let's pull up Zacian. Okay, so just off the bat you see, if they're running Jolly, if they're running a set like this, let's just see how much this does. And we were 44 here. 220 here let's just do some let's just do some exploring so ability is intrepid sword and item is rusted sword okay and then we have behemoth um sacred sword Close combat. We can tech all of these. Okay. So if you take a look at this, this is, I want to see something else too. This person that, that built this spread was doing, was actually doing this. Okay. So it doesn't change your spread enough to really matter. I think I like doing this. Um, so Behemoth Blade is a two shot, but you have a 30% chance to burn. In which case, if, if you burn them, it's not a guarantee. They, they will not get a two shot. It'll become a three shot. So already you've got a chance to burn them with flame body, which is phenomenal. Um, and overheat is going to KO this basic spread. Now, if your opponent's got some bulk, like the one that I'm running, let's say they opted for that exact spread. Oops, we want one point here. You actually have a 93.8% chance to OCO your opponent. So this Volcarona spread's really cool. This Pokemon is really good to set up Trick Room. Um, you can go for Rage Powder. If you wanted to give your Necrozma Trick Room um, instead of Protect, you could e easily do that. Go for Rage Powder plus Trick Room. Um, really, really solid. Otherwise, you've got Struggle Bug to reduce your opponent's damage. You've got Screens. I've been finding leading Grimmsnarl Volcarona is really, really good. You can drop your opponent's stats. You can set up screens you can be offensive with overheat you can redirect attacks um whatever um thunderous thunderous is mainly here as an incineroar check um incineroar would just run rampant through this team um this is a pretty bulky one as well i don't exactly know what these spreads do but um aaron trailer shared them with me um and they're pretty solid uh, wild charge fly superpower and then foul play is what i'm running you could run lash out here you could run a couple of different moves i don't think it really matters that much um as long as it's a dark move brutal swing could potentially be interesting too so i would recommend these evs though they've been really good for me so far um this mimic you spread is my sort of contraption my my build um i've been using sword stance so i've been using it like a pseudo mimic you here because if you actually pair thunderous plus mimic you you can get some pretty you can get air streams off with play roughs you can get superpower like max knuckles plus attacks off you can do a lot of damage with mimic you um with this offensive set 
and then you can just set trick room in the, or you can bring mimic you in the back or lead mimic you is just a trick room setter that can also be offensive as well um because we had volcarone on the team i didn't really think i wanted will-o-wisp and taunt might be valuable instead but we'll have to see we'll have to play more games with it to find out for sure and then hydragon as my sun check again these evs i'm not entirely sure what exactly they do um you could you could in theory drop that down a little bit and go for max um like that if you wanted to um that that that's fine too but nasty plot flamethrower earth power and dark pulse with volcarona resisting almost all of hydragon's weakness they're a pretty solid partner um volcarona resists fairy it resists fighting it uh, resists bug and um hydragon's weak to fairy dragon ice bug and fighting which volcarona resists all of those except dragon so you can get a pretty easy rage powder plus um rage powder plus nasty plot off which is pretty cool so yeah this is one team i'd recommend um i've been using it a lot on showdown and it's been really really solid um definitely worth looking at uses some niche pokemon as well which is always a cool thing but the team has a lot of synergy a lot of pretty cool um components to it a bit a bit uh, heavily skewed physical so you might have to bring landers a lot or thunders a lot but if you replace this with lash out you might be okay the last team i wanted to talk about is my take on sun so my players cup 2 experience was with sun and i um i played sun and i played a very similar team to this exact one in front of you um i played torkoal venu I played Charizard instead of Thunderous. I played Dusclops instead of Mimikyu. I played Tyranitar instead of Calyrex. And I played Togekiss here. And the team was a very just like offensive Sun team that also had the Trick Room mode on it. The Torkoal was offensive, but in this case, we have a cool like hybrid one. I think that that this team would be really solid. Calyrex is a pretty messed up Pokemon. It fits this team nicely because it doesn't have to Dynamax to be good. So I definitely think that this team is worth exploring as well. So Cobalberry Venusaur. I have actually been seeing a lot of people skip out on, um, skip out on the poison move. Sorry for the stuttering there. I've been seeing them skip out on the poison move. They've actually just been running Leaf Storm, Earth Power, and Weather Ball. Um, that way it gives you a fire move in the sun and you've also got, you know, earth power and leaf storm to potentially, um, help you out there. Um, give you, sorry, earth power. I was thinking about, I was thinking about a different Pokemon instead of Tapu Fini. That's where I kind of got distracted there. Weather ball gives you a fire move, which is really nice against opposing Venusaur as well as opposing steel types that maybe aren't weak to earth power. I don't think there are very many in the metagame, but it would be technically stronger than earth power. But Earth Power still picks up a couple other nice Pokemon, like opposing fire types, for example. And then Leaf Storm is obviously, like, in my opinion, it's better than Frenzy Plant. I think Venusaur prefers to have Leaf Storm because it can just go for Leaf Storm and then switch out if it needs to. Um, technically, we don't have a Focus Sash on this team, so you could run Sash Venu if you wanted. But I like Cobalt Barrier Life Orb, personally. This Torkoal set is pretty straightforward. It's got Double Fire, Yawn, and Protect. And actually, I think this one should be burning jealousy um i meant to do that earlier but i think this set's pretty sweet i think it definitely like gives you another access to sleep um eruption still pretty good it's not super necessary um but it's it's definitely like a solid um a solid option this is like a hybrid sort of thing max hp some defense and 196 with the mo this evs for the for the boost in the nature so Protect Yawn, Brain, Jealousy, and Eruption are definitely solid options. Um, next is the Thunderous. I've been talking about the Thunderous all night. Same set. Again, could change this move for whatever you wanted. Um, Mimikyu, Shadow Sneak, Play Rough, Trick Room. And uh, that was another thing about the last team. Shadow Sneak can also pop the uh, policy on the Necrozma. Same thing here. You just pop the policy on the Calyrex. I think for this team... You could run Swords Dance here if you wanted, but otherwise you could also run, um, you could also run Taunt or Will O Wisp, something like that would be fine too. Um, so I definitely think that this would be 
a cool Pokemon. Synergizes well with Thunderous, still sets Trick Room, things like that. Um, Calyrex Ice is going to be the Trick Room Sweeper of choice. Um, it's a bit better than Necrozma on this team just because it's it's a bit better than Necrozma outside of Dynamax. You've got Glacial Lance, Close Combat, and High Horsepower. Glacial Lance being just so good. Um, a snowball ability, definitely a solid Pokemon. I've used this thing a little a fair bit as well, and it's really, really good. Last Pokemon I threw on the team was a Leftovers called Mine Feeny, um, mainly for the terrain support and stalling out opposing Max, but I got distracted earlier when talking about the Venusaur because I was actually thinking Grimmsnarl might fit here pretty well. Um, Grimmsnarl gives you screens. It gives you... Um, sucker punch as well if you if you need it um and calyrex inside screens would be pretty stupid also like venusaur plus that could be pretty interesting too so i'm not sure yet i'm not sure yet grimstar could work pretty well too um and maybe would be worth considering but calm mind feeny is also very good it's just it's so bulky and it like pairs really nicely with the team and it can like it can switch into a lot of moves, take them off the chin, go for protect the next turn. It's a really good Pokemon at stalling your opponent's Dynamaxes. So this would be the Sun team I would run if I was going to run Sun. So yeah, I uh, I hope that that was helpful. I'm hoping to run this Dragonite team, but honestly, I might end up running this this Solgaleo or this Venusaur team. Um, this this Solgaleo team, or this, sorry, this Necrozma team looks really interesting and I really like it, but unfortunately, I just think it might not quite be there um in terms of like these gmax vine lash effects are just so so good and this team looks this team looks really solid this team looks really solid honestly they all look good i i'm, I'm excited for players cup 4 i'm hoping that i'm going to be able to do well and maybe qualify at least for the for the double elimination rounds so i did it once before technically i hope i get to do it again i'm really excited um but i'm going to be taking probably some of these teams for a spin tomorrow um i'll make a video tomorrow with uh with one of these teams and we'll we'll go through it probably this first one here we'll we'll take some time over the next couple of days to explore these teams a little bit more and then you guys can uh can make your decisions from there but yeah thank you so much for watching i hope you all enjoyed it and i will catch you on the next video see ya